Hey there, in this Photoshop tutorial I will show you how to create this uh, mysterious island in Photoshop. It's not a basic tutorial but it's not a really advanced one so you need to know the basics of how to work with layer masks and um, adjustment layers and clipping masks. And one other thing that I want to show you uh, besides showing you how to make this um, final result is I want to show you how to work with the Pixel Squid plugin. Uh, you can see if I zoom in that I added a lot of fish uh, here and this um, sharks and I want to show you how to use 3D objects on your uh, project. Um, this is the plugin that allows you to use free stock images, um, 3D objects and spin them around on your on your canvas and also how to create bubble brushes and how to create this rocky effect on this skull over here. So I hope you will enjoy it and let's jump right into it. On my website you will find the links to all the stock images that I use for this. Most of them are from unsplash.com. Some of them are purchased by me and you'll find the links to download the free the free versions of these images on my website. And the canvas that I will use for this is 2000 by 2700. So um, I will go ahead and copy merged here. And that way I can get the canvas size here. Okay, so this is the canvas size that we will use. We will start by opening the, the island image. This is an image from unsplash.com. But if you find other islands, you can you can use those. You can use those sandy islands with uh, palm trees and stuff like that. They also look uh, great. And before moving this to my canvas, because my canvas is a bit smaller, I will um, select the sky and mask it. The reason why I'm using a smaller canvas size is because I'm recording the video. You can use the full size uh, of the images if you want. And with the move tool, I'll just move this to my canvas over here and I will move it a bit higher up and I will make it smaller. And notice that I left some space uh, on the sides here. The next thing that I wanna do is add the sky so I can make the background. So as you can see, I'm first making the background and then we will add the details. I always work like that. So put your sky behind your island there. I used this one because I liked this sun that is over here so I want to place the sun right over there but you can use other sky images if you want you don't have to do it the way I do it but I liked that sun effect there I like to have light effects on my manipulations and now we have the basic uh, well the base of our background the next thing that we, that we want to do is create the underwater um, area here and for that, we're going to create a new gradient here, a new gradient layer. And here we want to use two colors. Uh, the first color is, um, I'm going to give you the codes for this. So this is the lighter color and then we will use a darker one. And the code for that is this dark blue. I'm gonna click OK. I'll change the style to radial and I'm going to click OK now. Uh, I will use this layer mask because I want to delete the effect over here. So first I'm gonna drop the opacity so I can see through it. I'm going to select the layer mask and with the gradient tool, black to white, I'm gonna make a gradient from here to over here. And now I want to move this a bit lower. So I'm going to have to double click here and move this a bit lower right there. Maybe the color is a bit too bright, but we will see that in a second. Now we have kind of the base here, but here on this part, we want to add more detail. The first thing I want to do is add some texture. So I will create a new layer and I'm going to go to filter, render and choose clouds. And I'm gonna change the blend mode of this to soft light and drop the opacity to let's say 10%. And I'm gonna copy this layer mask to this one with the Alt 
key, click and drag over that layer and it will copy the layer mask to that layer. And let's name this fog or something like that. And this will be our underwater gradient. And this will be our island. And this will be our sky. I renamed the layers because later on I will say let's go back to the island layer and that way you will know uh, which layer I'm talking about. And the next thing that I want to do is add some texture here on the bottom of the sea. So again I'm going to my stock folder. You will find if you're a premium member you can download the original stock folder and also the brushes that we will use. Well the brushes uh, are available for, for everyone but if you want the PSD file and that kind of things. If you're a premium member, you can log in and download them. I'm gonna make this a bit smaller. Uh, these images are from a from a pack that I created. These are underwater images that I took with my GoPro. So um, you can download the pack; it's free. And I'm gonna change the blend mode of this to soft light. Uh, let's see where that is. Soft light, and I'm gonna open. Well, let's before we do that, let's create the layer mask for this one and with an opacity of 100%, opacity and flow, soft brush, just get rid of the of the edges over there, like that. And now let's open the other one. You can use, uh, on that pack you'll find a lot of images, so you can use whatever you want. I just used these two images, but I'm gonna place this right over there. And before I I changed the blend mode of this, you can see it's very green. So I'm gonna press Control Command U to open the hue saturation and change the hue of this and desaturate this a bit. And now change the blend mode to soft light. Great. And I'm gonna create the layer mask for this and paint with this soft brush to blend the edges. And there we have our the bottom of our ocean or this uh, or the sea, whatever you want to call it. Okay, now we have the background ready. We can now add our uh, skull over here. So I'm going to go to my stock folder and open this image. And to subtract this from the background, to extract it, I'm going to use the quick selection tool. Don't worry about the edges because we're going to uh, have to uh, work on them with some brushes and create the work path. You'll see that uh, in just a moment. Just make a rough selection like this and edit copy. I'm not going to, well, actually let's create the layer mask. We can use it and I'm gonna drag this because it will add the layer mask as well. Let me close documents here, don't save. And this one, don't save. Okay, so this is my skull over here. As you can see, I didn't even refine the edge but what I want to do now is I want to make it smaller and make sure that it's uh, as wide as my island here more or less so I probably have to make the island a bit smaller okay now it looks a lot better and let's place the sky right over there okay now and for the skull here let's name this skull and for this with this layer mask that I already have uh, I actually have to apply it, so I'm going to apply the layer mask because I want to um, create a gradient here and hide the top part. So I'm going to, I created the layer mask and with the gradient tool I'll make a gradient from here to over there to the edge there where you can see where the the water edge is. You can copy this layer mask if you want and drag it there and, oops. Uh, no, that's the foggy, the fog, okay, like that. You can use the gradient of the underwater uh, layer if you want. And you have to drag it a bit higher up. And I'm going to copy it again. Okay, just leave a, just a bit of space here in between the island and the water. Okay, now we have the skull there. The next thing that we want to do is turn this bone uh, skull into a rocky um, texture and for that I use the picture which is this one you can use any image that you want but I liked the texture of the rock here and it, it was similar to the one that the island originally has 
so that's why I liked it. I'm gonna paste it on top of my skull here and I'm gonna clip it with the, you can right click and choose create clipping mask or you can press the alt key and put the mask between the two layers and click. And I'm gonna make it smaller. And what I want to do here is I wanna have some of these green areas there as well. Something like that. And I will change the blend mode of this to multiply. And this is how you get this sort of rocky texture. But the problem is the skull is too yellow and the this rock texture is too dark. And in order to fix that, we can create we can create an adjustment layer, a hue saturation adjustment for the skull. So in between the rock texture and the skull. And I want to drop the saturation of the skull a bit. Actually, let me deactivate the rock so you can see what I'm doing. See that? I made it, I dropped the saturation. And probably I can add some levels and see what we get with the levels. Yeah, it looks better. With the midtones uh, and the highlights, you can brighten up a bit the the texture. Well, we are actually increasing the the lightness on the skull itself. See that? But because this texture is very dark, and we use the multiply blend mode, everything um, takes the color from the layer. Uh, well, the light information from the skull itself. Okay, now we have the texture here. And the next thing I want to do is, as I said, work on the edges. This will be probably one of the most, well, the trickiest part, but you can do it manually if you don't want to do it how I do it. What I would like to do is create a work path around this skull over here. And then I'm going to stroke that uh, work path with a brush. If you don't want to do that, you can do it manually, but it takes a lot of time. You can get the brush and use, for example, this, um, this brush, this is a default brush that comes with Photoshop, select the layer mask of the skull layer and go ahead and just do things like this. The reason why I want to do this is because I want to make this edges look a bit more like the island itself. See this edge over here, rocks are not smooth and uh, are not smooth like our skull here. So we have to uh, create this jagged, um, edges here and the way I did it is using a work path. So what I did is I press and hold the control key and click on the thumbnail of the skull layer. This selects the edges and then I turn this into a work path by right clicking and choose um, create work path. You have to have any selection tool selected in order to see this. Make work path, leave the tolerance to two and this uh, now I have the work path over here and now I can get the pen tool right click and choose stroke path and here I can choose the brush tool and click OK but before I do that I have to make sure that um, I set my brush before I stroke uh, this work path so I will uh, first select the layer mask of the skull just to make sure that I have it selected and select the brush tool and the brush that I will use let's see I think I'm gonna use this one the 32 the 32 pixels brush. And if you don't see this brush, you just click this icon, depending on the version of Photoshop that you use. You will have this gear on Photoshop CC or maybe a, a menu icon there and choose reset brushes. And that's it. And now I'm gonna open the brushes panel by pressing F5 or I have it right here on the secondary toolbar here. And what I wanna do is deactivate everything that I have activated over here and then start from the top and on the brush tip shape, I want to increase the spacing because remember, we're going to automatically stroke this uh, along this um, work path. So um, let's see how this looks like. Yeah, it's okay. Maybe a bit more of spacing. And on the shape dynamics, I want to activate that as well. I don't want to check the pen pressure, but I want to change the angle. So I have random uh, brush strokes there. You can see it changes the angle and I'm also going to activate scattering on both axes and a scatter amount of 20 is okay and a count to two uh, maybe one is okay 
Now let's leave it like that. And now we have the brush ready to stroke this work path. I'm gonna select the pen tool. Make sure you have this, the layer mask of the skull selected. Right click and choose stroke path. And here on the tool, select brush. Make sure you don't check simulate pressure and click OK. And you, you can see what I did. This is what happened. But we have to do it again because we can still see the original edge. So you can do it again with the same brush or you can change the brush and uh, see what you get. I'm going to use the same brush for... I'm going to stroke it three times. That's it. Okay. You can use uh, other brushes if you want, but uh, anyways. Okay, now the edges are done, but we still have to refine this because you can see we have some small um, imperfections there. I just want the base here, not these pixels over here. So in order to do that, I will right click on the layer mask and choose Refine Mask. And here, just by increasing the contrast, you can see how they will go away. See that? The smaller pixels will go away and if you want to get rid um, of more of that you can increase the feather as well to about one pixels and maybe the smoothness to one or two and then increase the contrast even more you can also shift the edge a bit towards the left and I'm gonna drop the feather to 0 0.8 and the smoothness to one and let's zoom out a bit so we can see how that looks it doesn't look bad maybe the feather to 0 0.4 and seeing what we get and smoothness to 0 and shift edge to just minus 5 okay I'm gonna leave it like that and click OK make sure that I have the output to layer mask because I want to update this layer mask and we're done this is how I created this kind of edges and maybe they are not really realistic i should have used another brush but anyways it's not looking bad i think it's, look, it's looking better than than this okay great now we can move on and start making some details um the first thing that i want to do is make some adjustments to the skull itself and i will use layer styles for that because um, i think it's easier and in Photoshop CC, you can add multiple, for example, color overlays. You can see I have two over here. So you can add multiple overlays and multiple gradients on the same um, style. But if you cannot do that, you can also use layers and do it manually. What I want to do is first darken this um, bottom right side of the skull by using a gradient overlay. And you can see I still have the one that I used uh, originally. This is the effect black to white linear and with uh, an angle of um, this is how it looks like of, of 120 degrees change the blind mode to multiply and then drop the opacity to get the effect that you want then i use another gradient overlay i'm going to set it to normal so you can see it on radial well actually that's let's not use the gradient overlay let's use the inner shadow because it's better I'm going to switch this to normal and increase the opacity to 100% so you can see it. What I want to do is simulate the fact that we see this uh, skull through the water and the edges uh, look a bit brighter and have this misty effect like it's, well, we see this uh, through, well, through the water and uh, that's why I created this effect. Just inner shadow, see the effect before and after. And I use this blue color because uh, we are under the water. And well, use a size that you think uh, it's suitable for your for your island here. And that's it. And then another thing that I want to do is change the color, the tone of the skull. And for that, you can use color overlays. Um, so use this one, for example, this blue tone, and change this to color and just drop the opacity like that a bit higher and okay with that one it's, it's enough and see this now it looks a bit more natural I think um, if I deactivate the effect you can see the before and after I think it looks a lot very fake if we don't have these styles and that's why I added them Okay, now the next thing that we we'll want to do is 
create the waterline. Uh, you can leave it like that if you want, but what I did is I got this stock image and I just copied this part over here. I selected the sky and the area under the water and I just copied this and put it right here. What I will do is get it from the original image from over here and move it to my canvas because I don't want to spend time extracting that from from the from the background there and this is my waterline what I did I just squeezed it and then I duplicate it and put it side by side to have a wider area covered by this and I'm gonna squeeze it even more probably and I'm gonna move it lower okay right over there and you can also use blend modes if you want and layer styles let's try blend modes let's say multiply it's too dark overlay is gonna be too bright well it's not looking bad overlay overlay or soft light um, probably overlay looks better I'm gonna leave it on overlay okay now I have that there Let's keep working here on the underwater area and the next thing that I want to do is make those bubble effects that I that I told you. You can download bubble uh, brushes if you want but I will show you how to create your own because um, they're really easy to create I think and if you don't really if you don't need really high quality bubbles you can make it yourself uh, and I'm gonna create a new document 500 by 500 pixels and I'm gonna get the brush tool and select a hard brush and a size of about let's say like this 125 pixels black opacity and float 100% if you use a, a graphics tablet I suggest you switch to the mouse for this and just click once over there and then I want to make the brush a bit smaller 120 maybe and then I will select another tone a quite bright tone like this a gray we don't need colors when we make brushes and I'm gonna try and put the mouse as you can see here in the middle and click once and now I will drop the opacity of this to 0% and I'm gonna click again but with a brighter tone like for example this one I'm gonna click over there well I'm gonna make the brush a bit bigger because I dropped a bit the the size of, of that and hardness maybe to 50% will be okay or something like that do it again oh yeah that's better but with a darker tone and lower hardness and that looks better now I'm gonna make the brush even smaller a couple of times brighter tone and click there and maybe there once and now I'm gonna make it really small change the color to white and increase the hardness a bit and make a couple of points one there and one there and this is my bubble and now I have to convert this into a brush so I'm gonna go to edit and choose define brush preset and I'm gonna name it bubble if you don't want to do this or if you cannot do it uh, you can download this from the website as I said you, you'll find this brush on the website and you can use it okay let's go back to our canvas here the brush is created I will create a new layer here and I'm gonna name it bubbles and get my brush the brush is selected open my brushes uh, panel here and here on the brush tip shape I want to increase the spacing a bit on the shape dynamics I will check pen pressure because I'm using a, a graphics tablet so I can control the uh, the size of the brushes by uh, changing the pressure on the pen and I'm gonna change this to the size jitter to 100% I'm also gonna change the angle you can see how that looks right over here I also check scattering both axes scatter to the maximum and probably now the decrease a bit the spacing and the count I'm gonna leave it like that and yeah, that looks better but I have to make them really really small because this is an island and we have to make it 
this bubble is really small. That's why I said the quality is not really important here. I want to go here to the hue saturation of the skull and maybe increase it a bit to recover some of that original tone. Okay, let's go back to our bubbles and I'm going to use a tone, a color for this. I, I'm not going to paint them white. You can paint them white and change the blend mode, but it's not going to work really well. So I suggest you leave the layer, the blend mode of this bubbles layer to normal and use a bluish tone for them, like something like that. Not, not very saturated. Yeah, something like that. I'm going to zoom into 100%. I'm going to make the brush really small to like, you can see 10 pixels. And remember that I can also change, uh, control the size of the brush with the with the pressure of my pen. And I'm gonna click, for example, right here where you can see uh, cracks and stuff like that, and just make some bubbles like that. Make a few more right over here, right over there, maybe some over here, and just make a few bubbles uh, coming from cracks and stuff like that. I think it's looking more realistic. Uh, this one here is maybe a bit too big. But anyways, that's how I created these bubbles over here. The next thing that I want to do is um, make some light effects here on the top. So um, I'm going to locate the island layer and on top of it I'm going to create two clipped layers which I'll name light one and then another one also clipped to the island layer and I'm gonna name it light two. And light two, I'll set, set it to screen and light one, I'm gonna set it to color dodge. And we're gonna start with light one, which is on color dodge, select the brush tool, use a soft brush and uh, size about that big. And let's select a, an orange tone. We will create now this light here on the tops of the trees. Let's see if this color works and make sure that we don't have the shape dynamics on. Uh, it looks good but I want something more saturated. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Don't paint too much here on the on the rock side of the of the island. Just here the top part of the trees. And now I'm gonna select light two, which is on screen. And I'm gonna use the same brush, but with a brighter tone and something a bit more unsaturated like this. That's too, it's too bright. If, you, if the effect is too strong, use a darker tone instead of dropping the, the opacity of the layer. Just use a, another tone and that's it. That's okay, it's not looking bad, but something more saturated maybe a bit darker yeah that's it that looks a lot better now so this is our light glow and um, now let's create the light glow over here let's go here on the top of our layer stack create a new layer and let's name this sun glow and I'm gonna get the brush and I'm gonna do it with the brush I'm gonna start with the really um, dark tone like this, like this yellow. Uh, change the blend mode of the layer to screen, I forgot to mention that. And with a big and soft brush like this, uh, let's paint here and see how that looks. It looks good, but I want something more yellowish, more, more, well, more, more towards the yellow, the orange, like that. Click once, then change the tone, make it a bit brighter, make the brush smaller, click again, make the tone even brighter, make the brush smaller, click again, and then for the brightest spot right over there, use a really bright tone like that, and click once over there. And that's how I created this light. I also use the lens flare from a pack that I created, which you can also download from from the website resources.psdbox.com. I moved all the PSD files, resources, brushes, stock images, to a different website which I named uh, resources.psdbox.com and there you can download everything you want. I'm gonna copy this, uh, the pack is free, so you can download it from there. And I'm gonna place it that right over there, I'm gonna change the blend mode to screen, but this is too big so I have to make it smaller to about 50%. 
right over there. I'm going to flip it horizontally because I want to have this right over here. I like that detail and the sun rays. But one thing that I want to that I don't like is this thing over here. So I'm going to use the brush and I'm going to mask that out like that. And we're done. We still have to add one final effect here, but we will do that a bit later on. Let's move on and add the fish and uh, show you how to use the Pixel Squid plugin. Pixel Squid is a website, let me go there and show you, is a website that gives, uh, that provides 3D objects. And they provide high quality 3D objects, which you can use in Photoshop. As you can see here, they have a lot of images and they're really great. And for the kind of things that I needed, uh, which uh, is the fish, they're on, under the water and this worked perfectly. Let's go here and search for fish. And I'm going to show you how this works. Now here you can see a lot of um, fish uh, species and let's say we want to use this one. If we click on that, you can see that this download page opens and here you can see it starts to load the camera angles. That's why I like this um, stock images because they're not simply 3D objects but you can actually spin them around and you can download the image at any angle. For example, if you leave it like that and choose download PSD, you will download PSD file and you'll have the shadows and everything separated on layers. But what's even better about this is that you can click this button that says uh, add to Photoshop. You can also down download them as PNG files, but anyways, you can add them to Photoshop. But for that, you need an account. So you have to create an account. It's free and you have to install their uh, extension for Photoshop. If you go to the main page, uh, you can see if you scroll down a bit, you can uh, use their plugin and open the images straight in Photoshop because downloading them from here, uh, you download them as zip files and it takes a bit of time to, uh, if you want to download all the angles. So um, if you click the use our Photoshop plugin, you can click here the, to get the plugin. Here on the support, you will also find a lot of links. And here, if you click this um, button, you, uh, you will be taken to the uh, Adobe's add-ons uh, page and you can install it from here if you use uh, Photoshop CC, but you also have a link uh, that says using an older version of Photoshop here They will explain how to install this in Photoshop CC and you have a lot of help here So if you have problem installing this don't post comments about how to use this or how to install it because I'm not uh, the right person to guide you uh, through the process here you find all the information that you need on their website on pixelsquid.com and uh, here on this um, you can see the uh, demonstration here, how you can rotate this uh, right on your canvas. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So first, um, search for your object, as I said, fish. And let's say I want to use um, this one, the clownfish. I'm going to add this to Photoshop. And I'm going to go to my Photoshop CC here. And I already have the a plugin installed. If you go to window, choose extensions. Here's the pixel squid extension. And I added here to the secondary bar here. And these are all the objects that I have on my gallery that I added to Photoshop. So if I click refresh, you will see that fish appearing there. And let's say I want to add this fish over here. I'm going to first create a new group and I'm going to name it fish. And on this layer, I want to add this fish over here. And you can see it starts downloading the image and it adds it as a smart object. I don't need the shadow, so I'm going to uncheck that. And also I don't need the high resolution because I'm going to make this very, very small and the high resolution, well, the detail on the on it is not going to be visible. But the reason why I like this is because I can move this around and rotate it however I want. And you can see how this is going to up update my smart object and I can uh, rotate this however I want. And now I can make it smaller, let's say to about 10% um, or 15, 15%. And if you zoom in, here's my fish. And now I can, if I rotate this around, you can, uh, you will see that it, it will update that. And you can see it turns around. And that's great because I can now duplicate this and uh, place it there and then add a new one. I can create a new layer and add another one. 
get rid of the shadows and rotate it to another angle and that's great because that way you don't have repeated uh, fish there which is great and that's the only reason I used this plugin and that's why I did it 15% and place it there and now once you have a few ones you can duplicate them of course and then move them or uh, separate them so you don't um, have repeated fish right next to each other and let's add now another one add new and let's add for example this starfish over there and this one I want to place it right here somewhere but I have to first uncheck the shadows and change the angle to something like this right there let's wait for it to update great and now I can make it smaller let's say 25% or maybe a bit bigger and place it over there and maybe add a drop shadow to it three two and add a color overlay to mimic that it's underwater see the effect how it changes and that's how I added all the rest of the of the fish there it takes a bit of time but it takes even longer if you just download the PSD files from the side unzip them place them here and download all the angles here it's all quicker because you can spin them around and add different angles and make it look more realistic let's add another one which is the shark uh, just to show you one thing that I did let's locate the shark image this one over here I'm gonna add this and I'm gonna uncheck shadows and I'm gonna change the angle to something like this okay now I have my shark over here but if I just leave it like that first I'm gonna make it smaller like that if I just leave it like this it looks very fake so I used layer styles to make it look like it's actually under the water so open the layer styles and I activated color overlay with this blue tone you can sample the color from right from the water if you want and change the blend mode to color and this gives this gives it this tone here and I also wanted to add some shadow so I activated gradient overlay linear but I'm gonna leave it to normal so I can see what I'm doing change the angle to 90 degrees and move it a bit higher up and change the angle slightly to 85 and now I'm gonna change the blend mode to multiply and I will drop the opacity a bit. I just want to have some darkness on the top part and make the whole thing a bit darker. And I also uh, wanted to add a bit of like um, sort of foggy effect on it. And I can also use color overlay for that. But this time I'll choose the normal blend mode and just drop the opacity. Um, if you use a color similar to the color where the animal swims in, if you if you increase the uh, opacity you can see like um, that you make it less and less visible and this creates the effect that the shark is further and further away and I'm gonna leave it to 49% and see that now I think it looks a lot more realistic that than this so keep that in mind when you add your objects on the water um, and that's pretty much it I'm not gonna add the rest of the things here because uh, as I said it's just a matter of spending time and adding stuff there one thing that I will do though is add my boat there so I use the same plugin so I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna name it boat and open my pixel squid and here's the boat that I used this time I will use the high resolution because I want the details here on the on the object and I'm gonna uncheck shadows and I think this angle is okay actually a bit like that great now I'm going to create a new layer mask for it and I'm gonna make it smaller like this and I will place it right over there and with the layer mask I will hide the bottom part I'm gonna get the brush tool Hardness 100%, smaller size. I'm gonna click once here, press and hold the shift key and click there and my background, well, the bottom part of the boat is gone. 
and now I have to create some shadows under it with the brush tool soft brush and use like let's say 30 and 30 for the opacity and flow and instead of using black I'm gonna use this dark tone I'm gonna change the blend mode of the layer to multiply and just paint some shadows under the boat over there like that and probably use level um layer style sorry and maybe add a color overlay but this yellow tone and maybe a gradient overlay as well to make the bottom part a bit darker and of course you want to drop the opacity quite a lot and I think it looks okay now I'm gonna use a yellower tone here for this and that's my boat over there and um, what else uh, yeah I also used uh, a, the birds brushes that I, ha I have a, br a pack of brushes I'm gonna replace brushes I'm not gonna save this and I just added some birds flying there uh, into the sun. Uh, you'll find the link on the website, it's a free pack. And I use this, this brushes. But instead of painting with black, something like that, uh, let's increase the brush to 100%. So instead of, uh, of course I painted this on a new layer, instead of painting with black like that, I used a really dark uh, tone of orange, like this. And this look makes it look like these birds are actually illuminated by that sunlight over there. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna move them slightly to the side. And that's it. The next thing that I did is I created a, a, a gradient, two colors. Um, one of them will be yellow, like this. And the other one will be blue. Like so, maybe. We can change that afterwards and then I'm gonna change the blend, the style to radial. I'm gonna reverse it because I want the yellow part there and I'm, put, I'm gonna put it right there where the sun is more or less and change the blend mode to hard light. Okay the color is too, is too strong but of course I have to drop the opacity first 50% but it's still too strong so I'll have to use more unsaturated colors and darker like so and the yellow will be a bit more orange like that okay and now I'm gonna use this layer mask to drop the well to actually hide the effect there um, I, I only have the effect on the top part and if you want to have some of that blue, you can double click on the layer mask and drop the density of the layer mask. And this will let some of the effect through the layer mask and have it visible here. But I'm going to leave it to 95% or something like that. And we're done. Uh, that's how I created this island. The only thing that is left to do is create a stamp with Shift, Alt, Control and E. And I'm going to use the um, camera raw filter. I will always do this. Um, I like to use it and I could probably increase the clarity, the vibrance, reduce some of the contrast, maybe play with the white balance, have it more towards green, and something more, something a bit warmer. The shadows, I want to make them darker, this part of the, of the skull, it's a bit too bright I think and I could use a gradient, well a filter like this and just uh, reset everything here and maybe drop the exposure of it slightly and increase the clarity great and maybe then now move on maybe um, to the split tone here it's uh, really up to you I'm, I'm not uh, following any kind of I'm just doing it uh, by eye and maybe some post crop vignetting and lower the midpoint and probably increase the feather and the highlights and that's pretty much it I'm not going to do anything else to it see the before and after and that's how I created this this mysterious island in Photoshop 
I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you, you like uh, the final um, result. That's all for today. This is Andrei from PSD Box and we'll see you on the next tutorial.